welcome to the green room. Today's episode, or should I say live stream, uh, we'll be talking to O2E Brands, uh, an organization that's been twice recognized by Newsweek as a most loved workplace. And when it comes to contact center agents, that workplace uh, has led to industry leading employee engagement and retention. Um, so if you maybe haven't heard of O2E Brands, or perhaps you have, you will certainly have heard of the organizations um, that fall into their organization. That is 1-800-GOT-JUNK, WOW One Day Painting, and Shack Shine. So your hosts, that's me, Claire Beattie, Senior Director for Thought Leadership at Genesis, um, and Ginger Conlon, Thought Leadership Director. Joining us today, we have Ryan Weber, who is Senior Manager for Workforce Engagement Management. Join, uh, thank you very much for joining us, Ryan. Really excited to have you here. Yeah, thanks yeah. for having me. So, Ryan, um, we're we're uh, as Claire said, we're so excited to have you here. And you know, you are a big hitter in the industry. And as a big hitter, you are going to have some demands of what you need to have with you in the CX green room. So before we dive into a little bit, telling us a little bit about, you know, your role in OTE brands and things like that, tell us what is your green room must have and why? Right. So for me, green room must have, it's 9 a.m. over here on the West Coast. And that means blueberry smoothie for me, right? Nice and light. It's getting warm out, fresh, um, good to have on hand, and uh, one of my favorites, one of my go-tos. So green room must have for me. Awesome. Well, Claire and I are prepared as well. I, I tossed a couple oh. strawberries into mine and put it in a stemless martini glass because... Okay. Style yeah. points for you. For sure. <laughs> Ginger always gets the points for presentation. Uh, <laughs> I, unfortunately, I, I pre-made mine and then put it in the fridge. So now it's like less smoothie, more dessert. It's also changed color, so I will not be touching my smoothie, but I wish I had your smoothie, Ryan. Well, there you go. I mean, if you had a spoon, dessert is not a bad thing either, so. Yeah, <laughs> even a little whipped cream on top might make that really delicious. <laughs> well, so Ryan, let's dive in. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your role, and, and OTE brands. OTE yeah, for brands. sure. So um, I'm the senior manager for the workforce management team at O2E Brands. And um, I've been in the contact center industry myself for almost 20 years and in workforce management for uh, 12 of those years. And um, at O2E Brands, of course, our vision is building um, the most trusted brands and home services, one exceptional experience at a time. Um, and that starts with our all about people mentality. So uh, my team is responsible for supporting over 300 agents across the three home services brands, which you mentioned, uh, 1-800-GOT-JUNK, WOW One Day Painting, and Shack Shine. Um, and my passion and my role is actually supporting the growth and development of our people, um, both on my team and across the contact center as well. Fantastic. So um, Newsweek cited O2E Brands as having a most loved workplace for two years. How important is having that engaged workforce in the customer experience? Yeah, so I mean, first of all, it's a huge honor to be recognized on that list and uh, a tribute to our organization's commitment to, to our people um, with a focus on setting and achieving goals, both personal um, and professional. We have a great um, personal one-on-one life goals program at O2E Brands, uh, which kind of brings us together as a community um, and creates opportunities for us to connect and, and, and grow together. So um, obviously, we believe if you take care of, of your people, they'll take care of your customers. Um, and they'll take care of your business and we live that every day so uh, now as far as how that plays into creating an exceptional customer experience um, I mean you can tell when you're on the phone and you're talking with somebody uh, and they have a passion for for what they do and you can really feel that and you know similar to how you can really hear when somebody's smiling on the other end of the phone even though you can't see it um, you, can, you can hear that smile in their voice so um, our customers feel that too and uh, being able to support that type of engaging environment uh, for our people carries through their conversations uh, with our customers when they're having those. That's really true. You absolutely can tell like how somebody is physically expressing themselves, unless they're deadly silent, of course. But yeah, generally you can feel you can feel that warmth. Absolutely. And so 
Ryan, when we were talking, preparing for today, you had mentioned that there's been a mindset shift at OTE Brands. I am, at some point, I will actually say it right on the first time. <laughs> um, at OTE Brands, focusing more on recruit, um, focusing on retention more than just recruitment all the time. So can you tell us a little bit about that shift and why um, you're focusing more and more on retention? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, a huge part of our success um, and growth is making sure we have the capacity to be there uh, for when our customers need us. Um, and, you know, uh, it's been a real focus for us in our contact center uh, as how do we invest more time into our people in conjunction with simplifying our processes to make the agent role a really exceptional employee experience as well. And um, by focusing on these things, you know, and, and focusing on improving retention, um, it means that the resources that we may have used for hiring in the past, we can now reinvest into the learning and development of our agents. And uh, when you do things like that, you start to see, you know, growth of the agents into, into other roles too. Um, and, and, you know, they continue to grow within the organization and, uh, and that's really building from within. And that's a, that's a key focus for us. And uh, the shift to focusing on retention has really done that. I love that because it, it, you're taking these customer centric people and parsing them out into your organization, right? So it helps customer, that customer centricity like pervade the entire organization. Yeah, exactly. What, what do you attribute those gains to, like the gains that you've made around engagement, around retention? Like what are some of the specific areas around whether it's like hiring or onboarding or career pathing or also tools and technology at work? Like what do you think are the big levers? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it's, it's really a, a holistic approach um, from all points of the, uh, of the agent experience. And um, you know, so that starts with recruiting and our, our talent acquisition team does a great job of that. Um, we've adopted some or adapted, sorry, our, our, some of our scheduling methodologies um, to be more focused and agent centric, um, which has been, you know, we've seen some benefits there. And um, our learning and development team has done a great job, you know, creating um, different learning clinics for our agents uh, to be able to, to have additional learning and, um, you know, protecting that time for agents to have those opportunities is super important for us. Um, having things like a, a, an individual development plan for an agent um, and their leader walking them through that, uh, which focuses on their career progression. And, you know, if they're looking to be at this level at some point in their career, what are the small steps they can do to get there and set that long term goal for them? And, you know, that's that creates a, an opportunity for their leader to support them to do that, but also give some insight into where they're looking to progress. And, and then our agents have a clear path of, of where they're looking to go. Um, we have a, a real coaching focus within our organization as well, not just with our agents, um, but our leadership team as well. Uh, and really uh, focusing on you know, improving the things that we can and, and the coaching methodology that we have is, is something that we, we use in, in everyday, everyday life and everyday in, in our working environment. Um, and then with our remote workforce, uh, with, with uh, Genesis Cloud, uh, being able to have the remote workforce piece um, is, uh, is a huge benefit for creating that work-life balance as well for our agents. Just, um, I'd like to just ask you a quick follow-up question. You talked a bit about metrics and changing those to be more employee-centric. Tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, so um, when we're looking at like um, metrics to be, uh, you know, more employee focused, it's, um, you know, how many agents can we schedule into a, a virtual learning clinic and, and get them um, using those tools and resources? Um, you know, how can we focus on uh, our customers and making sure that their needs are being met? I mean, some of those things are, are really service level driven um, and making sure that we're, we're there for our customers when they need them in, in the right channels and in the right places. Um, you know, and creating uh, things like uh, we're looking at metrics uh, for our customers and, and how they're um, coming into us, whether what channel that is and in what time of day and day of week and those things. How do we make sure we can match our agent schedules up with those um, while also making sure that we have uh, that solid work life balance for them as well? So um, a number of different pieces and, and how many people are we getting into those is those shifts? So. Um, there, there are some uh, lots of uh, little nuances and, and little processes we have in place to make that happen. And it's, we've seen some benefits to that for sure. 
It sounds like it's sort of a balance between the service level type of metrics and then the employee and you know learning and, and wellness type of metrics as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if anyone is watching and has questions for Ryan, please go ahead and put them into the comments. We have a, we're monitoring that, so we will uh, throw them out to Ryan if you do have any questions you'd like to answer. So while we're we're waiting on that side, um, you know, Ryan, this morning I was reading an article on LinkedIn by Jeannie Walters, who's a, a customer experience analyst and and consultant, and um, you know, she was saying how some companies say that they have this customer centric culture, but when you get down and actually look at what's happening, it's much more talk than action. And one of the key things she said is so important is actually taking care of your frontline staff. And she was saying that one of the disconnects is senior level folks don't often understand what that job entails and really making sure that frontline staff is trained and et cetera. And you're doing so much of what she's saying is important to do. It just shows that it really is pervasive in your culture to have that, that employee engagement that then translates to that customer centricity. So love all the things that you're doing um, at OTE. And so I, I thought also, you know, we've talked a bit about the, the, um, you know, person side, the process side, maybe we could talk a little bit more about the technology and how you're using um, WEM, Workforce Engagement Management, to help with all the things that you've been talking about so far. Yeah, for, for sure. And um, I think that there's a, a lot of pieces. Um, when we made the transition to the platform, I think when, when you go uh, and, and you and you adopt a, a platform and, and you, you really try and go like for like, and I think that that's how everybody tries to start. Um, but really for us, it's taking a step back and, and saying, uh, what's the outcome we're trying to achieve? Uh, that now that mean that we might need to change a process that we have, maybe a legacy process that we have. Um, you know, if we can leverage our system to reduce the work effort for our people by adjusting our processes to achieve the same outcome, um, that's really been a focus for us. Is uh, you know revisiting those things and having a look. Is this something that we we really need to invest our time in? Is this an outcome we're still trying to drive toward? Towards if not, you know, maybe that's something we move away from. If it is, how can we make changes to our process on the side leading up to the outcome that um, adapts with our, with our system and, and can grow into where we're looking to be um, in the future? So um, try not to get the, you know, the square peg in the round hole and really try not to force something in that's, that's not going to fit. It's how you take a step back, uh, look at where we can gain some efficiency and, and continue to drive towards the outcome, not necessarily um, how you get there. Although... The journey is kind of the fun part because that's where you get to be a bit creative um, when you're when you're going through that process, and and that's fun for everyone and creates a great learning opportunity for our people uh, when we go through changes like that as well. Any surprise or something unexpected that that came about as you were going through that process? Even yeah. you know, something even fun or you know unusual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, you know, one of the things is. Uh, I think with with, um, with Genesis Cloud and uh, the workforce um, platform, um, updates come very fast. Uh, it's, it's once a week. There's there's release notes, and we're okay. What, what's coming out, and what just came out, and how can we leverage that? And it creates that sort of excitement, um, which is which is just a lot of fun um, to to get those new features. You know, uh, it, everybody gets so excited when there's an update to their phone, right? Um, and that's kind of how I'll describe it. It's the same sort of experience. And, uh, you know, when, when you're in workforce management and technology changes and you, you still get excited about those things. And I think that that's always fun is, is those release, the release dates we look forward to, um, and seeing what new features are out and, uh, how we can continue to, uh, adapt our processes with the new features. Um, you know, that, that's always fun for our team. I'm curious about the, the square pegs that you were trying to fit into round holes. Um, can you give us some examples of the things that, you know, you found actually, you know, there is a different way. Let's, let's try it. Yeah, for sure. So 
I think one of the ways that was, um, you know, we, we tried to do that uh, was uh, everybody's got exceptions, right? So you have agents who have offline time and um, you want to make sure that um, they're getting, you know, exceptions. So it's not impacting their adherence. So, um, you know, first of all, we looked at our adherence goal and saw, you know, what's the right fit for that for us. Um, looking at, you know, obviously call times and after call work mode and those sorts of things and determining um, what that uh, should be, uh, setting that guideline. Um, and then looking at the system and saying, okay, what about our configuration? Can we um, reduce our work effort here? Uh, maybe creating, um, you know, some, I guess, leeway uh, for agent statuses to, to have a little bit of time on either end. And um, even though that, uh, you know, that time would be exceptioned automatically, we can still have a look back and, you know, see what, uh, where we were spending our time. But what it does is it alleviates that process of a leader saying, okay, I need to exception this time off an agent schedule. Um, you know, WFM then has to go in and, and add it and approve it. And like all those sorts of like little nuances and pieces that can add up over time, particularly with a daily task like that. Yeah. Um, you know, you kind of, you kind of wipe away that and you start to, to gain that time back within your organization. Um, and it's a small tweak and it, you know, it's just looking at it from a different angle. Do we need to approve every single one of these? Or can we create a bit of a, a buffer there and then just report on it after the fact? So it's just looking at things like that, I think would be you know, a good example of where we saw some efficiency gains with, uh, with leveraging the platform. And I'd love to know whether you've sort of had any like hard metrics or like you've got any numbers that you could share with us around efficiencies that you've made or other improvements that you've seen. Yeah, so from the accession process I just talked about, um, we saved around 45 minutes a day um, just for our team uh, from, from implementing a process like that. Um, we also had uh, the shift trade functionality, which we previously weren't able to leverage in the platform. We, we adjusted some of the parameters around that and were able to start leveraging it more effectively. Um, that we did some uh, analysis on it uh, earlier this year and uh, we were able to reduce the amount of shift trade requests that we were getting uh, by about 56 percent um, which is obviously a huge amount of time taking um, you know the leadership team uh, and then our team you know kind of out of the equation for those and make it more hands-off self-serve so um, that was really beneficial uh, and then um, we also had a, a fairly large project for us which was a, a shifting our our scheduling methodology to agent focused scheduling um, and really driving towards work times and days that that fit our agents' preferences and, and trying to drive towards a, a high number um, where we can get agents into their preferences. And um, once we kind of sorted that out and were able to design that program, we were then able to go out and then hire into the, the shifts and work times that our people didn't want to work. So now we have people coming in who want to work those times and filling those spots, um, which, you know, it just creates that, uh, that level of engagement. I mean, one of the biggest influencers and in, I think anybody's work life is their schedule. And so, how can you make that? Um, how do you make that something that somebody wants to come and, and work for your organization? And you know, schedule is a big piece, uh, particularly for um, our agents. Yeah. So no, no one's getting the shift that they don't want. Somebody actually wants it. That's right. We hire into those, and then you know, if some somebody changes over time and, and wants a different preference, then uh, we work towards you know um, bringing on somebody to to fill that spot for them, and then try and move them forward into into their preference um so yeah it's a it's a waterfall effect but um it's it's definitely something that we focus on love that so any fun story of from one of the employees having all these recent changes like a, a you know a best thing someone has said or or some positive change that that you've seen yeah, I mean, I think just we've seen, you know, some like some great uh, engagement scores, um, like you had talked about before for our organization and, um, you know, uh, scheduling is especially in a 24 hour contact center that we have mm -hmm. um, can be something that's, that's a challenge for people. And, um, you know, that's kind of not not uh, not been a ch as much of a challenge anymore. And um, that's been a, a really nice thing for us um, as far as like. Uh, a fun story, I think, um, you know, when I think about all of the, the virtual learning clinics, we're able to apply to our agent schedules and um, we do this automatically. Uh, it's just the, the volume of, of how many, how much time they get to, to focus on these things is, 
you know, I think great. And I think it creates that, um, that learning culture and that fun environment and um, something that uh, has been, has been really good as well for agents. Um, you, you mentioned earlier that, you know, when, when new releases come out, you know, you're excited to see what capabilities are coming. Like, where do you feel is, where, where are you going next? Like, where would you like to take this in the future? Yeah, for sure. So I think we have a culture of um, think big, start small and learn fast. And so those updates really play into that. And so uh, when we're evolving um, and looking to continue to focus on the digital side of the business, there's a few things that really excite us on that roadmap. Um, of course, now we're two years on the platform and we want to continue to look to find ways to do more with less. And so there's some there's some pieces on that roadmap for us that we're really excited and looking forward to. Um, there's a, a schedule first piece that uh, is, is on the roadmap, which we're really excited about. Um, but how do we continue to, to leverage those pieces that are coming out on the roadmap to pull away the scaffolding that's kind of built up around I think everybody has, you know, those Excel sheets that they still work with um, to, to, to try and get what they need. Um, how do we kind of continue to pair those away and, and slowly but surely try to bring as much as we can in system and focus on um, using our system to optimize our processes? And, and for us, like um, what's next is that means that it's more time for us doing the right things, which is focusing on developing our people. And that's what we're going to continue to do. Ryan, thank you so much for sharing all the, the O2E brand story and the amazing things that you're doing around customer engagement. I think it's really inspiring. And um, for everyone who's joined us today, thank you so much. Be sure to like, share, tag people who you think will benefit from hearing Ryan's story and the, the O2E brand story. And we will see you next time on the CX Green Room. Bye-bye. Thank you.